Cats with real life jobs. The internet loves cats. It's kind of a cult. But let's face it, they are far too independent to submit to being trained by a mere mortal. As a result, it could be argued that they have no real purpose other than to be fawned over. Of course, many animals have been trained to fulfill a purpose for the service of mankind. Where would we be without horses to pull old-timey wagons or pigeons to send not-so-instant messages when your internet is down? Many animals have accepted their enslavement to humanity, but cats have always refused to do pretty much anything they don't want to, which is pretty much everything. So rather than chasing foxes down holes or dutifully fattening themselves up for our dinners, some cats have taken up professions many of us would envy, and some have even weirdly become our equals. Here are seven cats or groups of cats that are pulling their own weight to get ahead in the modern world. Stubbs, Mayor of Tolkitna, Alaska. As if the Cat Kingdom's plans for their endgame and world domination wasn't clear enough. It's hard to imagine that the best candidate for the job was a feline, but it's hard to deny that Stubbs brings a quality to politics not found in any other candidate. Cuteness. And maybe, if you're lucky, a disavowed brat. Stubbs is not without his detractors, and has even survived an assassination attempt by a gang of rowdy teens with a BB gun. He was once severely injured by an attack by a dog. Because let's face it, some dogs are jerks, and obviously, they started it. Thanks to a crowdfunding campaign which drew donations from around the globe, Mayor Stubbs was thankfully rehabilitated and now spends his days in comfort and safety from political extremists in his mayoral chambers above the general store in the small town of Tolkien where he benevolently rules. Larry, Chief Mouser to the Cabinet Office, United Kingdom. The position of Chief Mouser in Number 10 Downing Street, the main office of the UK government and home of the Prime Minister, has been an appointment that stretches back as far as 1515. Lord Chancellor Cardinal Wolsey's cat was the first to hold the office during the reign of King Henry VIII. The longest serving cat was Wilberforce, a befitting name for a cat of such high station, who served through the terms of four separate Prime Ministers over a period of 13 years. The position has not been a continuous one, sometimes unwisely remaining vacant for long periods of time, and often to the government's detriment. In 2011, British news provider ITN reported that a rat had been spotted for the second time on the steps of Number 10 during a news report on TV. The government initially stated they had no plans to employ a mouser, yet quickly backtracked and appointed the current incumbent, Larry, to the esteemed position. Larry's tenure has not been without incident. In what could possibly be a political move, Chancellor George Osborne's cat, Freya, almost usurped the position from Larry, but he was able to maintain the position through the assistance of his many political allies. Or maybe George just wanted his cat back. I don't know. The Canadian Parliamentary Cats. What is it with constitutional monarchies and government-appointed cats? Canada doesn't have just one cat overseeing their parliament, but at one time was home to 30 felines. For close to 100 years, Canada's Parliament Hill was home to a cloudy of strays that were originally brought to the offices in hopes that they would rid Parliament of their mouse problem. Politicians are renowned for their foresight and planning, and it wasn't long before the Parliament and surrounding grounds were overrun with strays thanks to a lack of spaying and neutering. Although a small number of cats were retained in the offices to help keep rodents at bay, most were forced out with little regard for their catty fates. Stereotypically named cat lady Mrs. Mabs was among the first to begin feeding the cats, and after her came a long list of groundskeepers and members of the public who volunteered their time and money for their care. The parliamentary cats soon became a tourist attraction, and even featured in an art exhibit and an annual calendar celebrating the political pets. Sadly, the cat's presence in Canadian politics came to an end in 2013, when after a long-term program of spaying and neutering, the last remaining four cats were adopted out to the public. The Hermitage Cats In 1745, the Empress Elizabeth of Russia ordered that cats should be brought into the palace to put an end to their mouse problem. Since then, Russia has seen much political change. The palace and the surrounding grounds have long since been converted into one of the largest and oldest museums in the world. But the cats have remained, 
the cats were pretty much left to fend for themselves until Maria Kulterman began directing the Hermitage Museum's cat program in 1990. Over 70 cats were reported to live on the grounds in 2013. The cats live in the museum's basement but really roam the surrounding area. Under the current program, the animals are spayed and neutered, have their own kitchens to prepare their food, and three people are employed to care for the animals. The Hermitage cats even have their own press secretary, and it has been said by staff that the cats were as well known as their collections, which for a museum known to have the largest collections of paintings in the world, that may be a slight exaggeration. But I wouldn't go around expressing that opinion at the annual Cat Fest, which has been held at the Hermitage to celebrate their cats since 2011. You're likely to get your eyes scratched out. Tips the Great, British Post's number one cat. Cats have been employed by the British Post since 1868 to catch mice and to look cute. What else? An official weekly salary was paid to the cats to maintain their upkeep. The program was very successful, which means either London has one hell of a rat problem, or people are posting rodents in the mail for some reason. Easily the most renowned post cat was Tibbs the Great, who served at the London Post Office headquarters from 1950 for 14 years. Tibbs was paid a salary of 2 shillings 6 pence a week, working in the post office basement catching rats. That's pre-decimal old time English money. Tibbs' skills as a mouser and his undeniable feline charms won the hearts of London and his portrait was featured in the book Cockney Cats, and he even attended a Cats and Film Stars party. Tibbs died in 1964 of cancer of the mouth and was so mourned by his co-workers that he was given an obituary in the post office magazine, the number one publication for fans of male and mailmen, I mean male people, whatever. The last cat to serve the British Post was Blackie, who died in 1984, whose death coincided with the introduction of rat-proof plastic mail sacks. So apparently, the rats are fine, as long as they don't eat the mail. Katmandu, co-leader of the OMRLP. OMRLP stands for, wait for it, the official monster raving loony party, a registered political party in the UK, and not a Monty Python skip. Originally named Catman, Katmandu officially became the party's co-leader in 1999 after the death of the OMRLP's founder, Screaming Lord Such, 3rd Earl of Harrow. I'm 90% sure that's not a legit title. Katmandu's owner, Howling Lord Hope, was the only other candidate, and when both he and his cat received an equal amount of votes, it was decided that they both serve as joint leaders of the party. The party proposed a law that Katmandu be the only cat allowed to bear the name. The OMRLP saw its greatest political popularity under the cat's joint leadership until he was killed tragically in a car accident in 2002. Katmandu's death prompted the party to begin lobbying for cat crossings on every major road. Tama, Super Station Master. Tama's story is so quintessentially Japanese. Tama was part of a group of strays that used to live around Kishi Station in the town of Kinokawa. Local softy and informal station master Toshiko Koyama used to feed the cats, as did many of the commuters who frequented the station. It seems Tama became something of a local legend, and within a few short years turned a quiet train station that was on the verge of being shut down into a tourist attraction that has been estimated at bringing in as much as 1.1 billion yen into the small town. Tama was officially recognized as a station master and then later as a super station master, which sounds so Japanese I can only imagine it came with some kind of giant battle robot and a toy line. Instead of a salary, she was apparently paid in cat food. During her tenure as Station Master, a train was decorated with cartoon images of Tama and Kishi Station was rebuilt to resemble a giant cat head. Sadly, she died in 2015 from heart failure. She was honoured with a Shinto funeral and named Honorary Eternal Station Master. Her legacy lives on in her deputy, Nitama, which translates to Tama 2, who has very big but cute boots to fill.